aware that there's still some who would question or even justify the offense of 9-11. But let us be clear. Al-Qaeda killed nearly 3,000 people on that day. The victims were innocent men, women, and children from America and many other nations who had done nothing to harm anybody. And yet Al-Qaeda chose to ruthlessly murder these people, claimed credit for the attack, and even now states their determination to kill on a massive scale. They have affiliates in many countries and are trying to expand their reach. These are not opinions to be debated. These are facts to be dealt with. Here's a fact, not an opinion to be stated. According to the government's official story of the collapse of the World Trade Center, two 110-story buildings collapsed in approximately 10 seconds because of a kerosene fire. NORAD stands down. Numerous war games on the day of 9-11 paralyzing our air defense system. How about those facts to be considered? President Bush's redirection in Iraq is leading some Americans to ask themselves, just how did we get here? Less than a month after the attacks of September the 11th, America began its war on terror in Afghanistan and the hunt for Osama bin Laden. Tonight, KSLA News 12's Jeff Farrell takes a closer look at these origins and discovered something that's still conspicuously absent. The FBI's 10 most wanted poster reads, quote, Osama bin Laden is wanted in connection with the August 7, 1998 bombings of the United States embassies in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania and Nairobi, Kenya. These attacks killed over 200 people. In addition, bin Laden is a suspect in other terrorist attacks throughout the world. It turns out, though, bin Laden has never been indicted for 9-11. And there's not a single mention of it directly in the FBI poster. Sheila Thorne in the FBI's New Orleans office told us, quote, the indictment could be superseded if necessary. In other words, 9-11 charges could be tacked on later for something many describe as the Pearl Harbor of our generation. As for why there is no mention at all of 9-11 in the FBI's 10 most wanted poster of Osama bin Laden, we wanted to get a comment from the White House as well. When we talked to a gentleman by the name of Blair Jones at the White House press office, he told us that we need to go back to justice, in other words, the FBI. We told him we wanted a separate comment, and he said, quote, we speak with one voice. Either you are with us, or you are with the terrorists. Just nine days after 9-11, the president addressed a joint session of Congress where he blamed al-Qaeda, even mentioning its leader Osama bin Laden by name. Then came December 13, 2001, when the Pentagon released bin Laden's so-called confession video. The FBI revised bin Laden's poster two months after September 11th, and five years later, there's still no 9-11 reference. According to Congressman Kurt Weldon, it was a secret Pentagon intelligence unit, codenamed Able Danger, that knew a year before 9-11 that lead hijacker Mohammed Atta was in the United States and connected to Al-Qaeda. And as you can see, they identified Mohammed Atta's cell. In the summer of 2000, he says, the Pentagon Special Ops Command had identified two terrorist cells inside the U.S. and knew of the connection between Atta and three other men who became hijackers. When the agents recommended telling the FBI, Weldon says, Clinton administration lawyers said no, because Atta was in the country legally and could not be targeted by military intelligence. And their recommendation to bring the FBI in to take that cell out, which was ignored, and they were told you can't do that. So a year before 9-11, they had their picture? They had the picture of Mohammed yes. Atta and they knew roughly where he was? Yes. Weldon, who's a ranking member of both the Armed Services and Homeland Security Committees, says he got this story from three agents in the Able Danger Unit, one of whom confirmed this to CBS News. Lee and I write in our book that um, we think the commission in many ways was set up to fail because we had um, not enough money, we didn't have enough time, we had been appointed by the most partisan people in Washington, uh, the leaders of the House and Senate.